At number 10 spot, we have Slaughterhouse Canyon. This story shares similar characteristics as the story of La Llorona, so basically all sorts of messed up. In the late 1800s, a family lived inside of a small wooden shack in the middle of Slaughterhouse Canyon. The husband was a hardworking man and wanted nothing more but to provide and care for his own family. And around this time, gold rushes were a big thing, so it wasn't uncommon to have men leave the family for weeks on end. So one day, the husband decided to go out on one of these gold rushes, but weeks turned into months Months, and the husband never ended up returning. This caused the family to starve and suffer, but this had the most effect on the wife who became extremely delusional from hunger and grief. This delusion caused her to grab an ax and proceeded to murder all of her children. She then carried their bodies to the nearby river where she screamed for days supposedly, until she passed away from starvation. And according to local residents, the wails and sobs of a heartbroken and psychotic mother can still be heard within the canyon at night. Number nine, the Muggian monster. This beast is also known as Arizona's Bigfoot, and as you can see from the photos, you can see why. This monster is said to live on the Muggian Rim, which is a steep cliff that runs 200 miles from eastern Arizona all the way to New Mexico. The monster is also spotted within the Ponderosa Pine Forest as well. Those who have spotted it have said it stood seven feet tall, covered in hair, and walked upright like a bipedal. The same people who saw it also noted how territorial and violent they can be. But really, why would anyone want to mess with these guys? It's said that if you smell rotting flesh nearby, then the Muggian monster is really close. So when that happens, be sure to dip straight out of the area. Number eight, skinwalkers. If you know a thing or two about mythical creatures, then you must know about skinwalkers. Well, yeah. Arizona is their home, unfortunately. Arizona is deeply rooted in the Navajo culture, so this is a beast that originates from that. A skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or even disguise himself as another animal. For some infight, the Navajo believed in powers and that it could be used for either good or evil. Medicine men use the powers for good in order to heal and apply aid, but the alternative route is to use the powers for bad. Only when a person commits the evilest of deeds will they be given supernatural powers, turning them into a skinwalker. They can transform into anything they want as well, including any animal or human. And the worst part is, is that if you stare into the eyes of a skinwalker, they can absorb themselves within your own body. So yeah, let that one sink in with you. Number seven, two guns. Along Interstate 40, stuck between Flagstaff and Winslow, is the Arizona ghost town of Two Guns. Not much remains of this once thriving town after a fire in 1971 nearly burnt it to a crisp. However, this wasn't the only time the town faced bad luck and tragedy. In 1878, the story goes that a group of Apaches raided a Navajo camp and took off toward Canyon Diablo. The Navajo gave chase and found their enemies hidden in a small cave in a shallow part of the canyon. They ended up burning 42 of them. Ever since this massacre, the town has been said to be cursed. Further confirming this, in the 1920s, this town started to become alive again with new buildings including a trading post, restaurant, gas station, and even a post office. This development didn't stop there. Eventually, a new zoo was going to be created, except the builders decided to excavate the local cave where the massacre occurred. They ended up pulling out a lot of human bones and skulls and used them for decorations. Yeah, I know. At our number six spot, we have the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine. East of Phoenix, Arizona, a local legend arose, inspiring many men to find riches they could only imagine. The Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine is possibly the most famous lost mine in all the world, and people have been trying to find its whereabouts since 1892. The story goes that in the late 1800s, a German immigrant named Jacob Waltz found a gold mine that made him wealthy overnight. But as many of us would probably do, he kept it a secret from everyone. Fast forward, and on his deathbed, he would give a handful of people the directions to find this cave. However, these directions did nothing because it's still lost today. Each year, a little under 10,000 people attempt to find this lost mine, and unfortunately, this expedition has cost many of them their lives. Many of them are found headless, shot by a firearm, or go completely missing from the grid. So if you ever want to become very rich really quick, why not give it a shot and find this lost mine? In the hump of our list, we have the rake. Many of you have seen this image somewhere on the internet, but the people of Arizona have seen this creature in person. These monsters are said to reside in the Grand Canyon Caverns near Peach Springs, Arizona. They are described to be nine feet tall, slender beings that only appear at night and having a thirst for human flesh. And it's pretty easy for them to devour us because it's said that their claws are the size of our fingers alone. You will know one is nearby just by the sound they make. 
It resembles a high screech, and at close ranges, it could even make a person deaf. These creatures have been spotted all the way back since 1800s, and ever since, they have made their mark on Arizona's history. Number four, Arizona State Prison Complex. Since 1910, death sentences have been carried out in the Florence prison. According to the Arizona Department of Corrections website, about 100 inmates have been executed by hanging, lethal injection, or gas chambering on the grounds of the state's first Hugo prison in Florence in the past 100 years. And let me tell you, from all those deaths, a lot of ghosts are bound to come. And it shouldn't come as a surprise that there have been quite a few supernatural tales told over the years, coming from both prisoners and guards. Both have reported seeing several instances of quote, mist that look in the human form, or having their ears assaulted with quote, screams and other strange sounds. Much of this paranormal activity occurs in the building that houses the prison's death chamber, which would make a lot of sense to say that these are the ghosts of former inmates. Number three, Oliver House. This building is considered to be the most haunted hotel in all of Arizona, so I guess I'll be booking my next visit right now. I'm just joking. So the reason why many claim this is the most haunted hotel in the state is the fact that 26 lives were lost in this building since it first opened in the early 1900s. So yeah, this house has a bloody history. During the gold rush, the house served as a hotel for miners, and one story involves a miner by the name of Nathaniel Anderson, who stayed in room 13 at the Oliver House. He would be caught going out with the wife of someone he owes money to, and days after, he would be found dead with two gunshot wounds. Guests of room 13 now claim to see his ghost near the stairs before it completely enters the room. One DJ even booked the room after a $100 bet, and the moment he stepped in, he said he saw Anderson's body standing in the middle of the room. Number two, Jerome Grand Hotel. This hotel first started as a hospital, and as we know, hospitals are haunted. Just kidding. But hospitals are inevitably going to have a lot of lives lost within, and as they say, more deaths, more ghosts. You get the point. After the building turned into a hotel, many residents claimed supernatural activity within the halls, in their rooms, and basically everywhere in the hotel. And many place blame on the former patients who passed away in the former hotel. Apart from the haunting, the place is also a beacon of bad luck. A man named Cloud Harvey lost his life after being crushed by a self-service elevator. And another five people took their own lives inside of this hotel. All the way out of number one spot, we have Territorial Prison. Yuma's Territorial Prison is known for being a gloomy and unwelcoming place for visitors, and is situated as far west as you can go before approaching California. Over 3,000 prisoners were kept in this prison throughout its 33-year operational period. Inmates who committed murder, theft, and even worse, were jailed in here. The walls of this jail were so high that the inmates were unable to see the outside, and the worst among them was placed in the dark cell. The convicts were banished into the darkness, left to their own devices to cast any curses or evil thoughts they dared. With its rich history and tragic figures, it is now a fascinating museum to visit with their family. At our number 10 spot, we have the Candy Lady. In the early 1900s, children in the rural town of Terrell, Texas started to go missing. Some of the residents blamed it on the Candy Lady. The story says that she would go around leaving candy on children's home windows just before bedtime. As the parents began to fall asleep, it will encourage children to grab the candy, but as they try to grab it, the lady grabs them and feasts on their sugar-laden blood until there isn't any left. A farmer allegedly found rotten teeth on his farm and later found the body of a boy with his pockets stuffed with candy. Many people believe that Candy Lady is in fact real and went by the name of Clara Crane. Clara Crane was accused of poisoning her husband back in 1895 with poison laced caramel candies, but that's not all. Five years before the incident, Crane's five-year-old daughter passed away from unknown causes, which many believe that she poisoned her daughter as well. At a number nine spot, we have La Llorona. This legend originates from El Paso, Texas. Almost all Latin cultures know the story of La Llorona, and the people of El Paso are no exception to that. La Llorona directly translates to the weeping woman, which perfectly describes the behavior of this malevolent spirit. She is set to haunt the riverbanks of the Rio Grande, where she is searching for her two children whom she had already drowned in that very river. Now there are many iterations of the story, but I'll just mention the most popular one. The legend goes that a lady found her boyfriend with another woman. After a heated argument between the two, the woman was heartbroken and wanted to get revenge, so she took the children and proceeded to drown them in the Rio Grande River in Texas. It's also said that when she was done throwing her children into the river, she went back to her lover's home with a bloody wedding gown, showing her she would do whatever it took to be with him. It's said to be the reason why many children disappear in that very area, and she supposedly takes other children to fill the void she lost. So if you're in the area, beware of a woman weeping in 
a wedding gown who is sitting by the Rio Grande. I had a number eight spot of El Kakui. This creature is known as South Texas' official boogeyman. There are many versions of El Kakui since it already originates in Mexico as well. It's said that this monster kidnaps children who misbehave and takes them back to the mountain where he lives to devour them. He appears as a hairless creature with an enormous head that dwarfs his spider-like body. He also has these large red glowing eyes, red ears to hear everything, and razor sharp fangs and claws to accompany that. The origin of El Kakui goes that a man was suffering with tuberculosis. Desperate to cure himself, he fetched an African witch doctor. The doctor told him to drink a child's blood, but as he did, he started to turn into the monster described. Ever since, he has a never-ending thirst for children's blood. At our number 7, we have the Screaming Bridge. In North Arlington, Texas, 50 years ago, there was a group of teenage girls driving home from a football game. The bridge was designed to only fit one car at a time, and I know, what a dumb bridge, but this was in the past and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. The girls weren't paying attention and went full speed over the bridge until a car with no headlights struck them head on, with all of the girls passing away. Some say when they go near the bridge, they can hear the distant screams sound like the girls before they passed away. As well, if you go over the bridge and look down at the water below, you can see the tombstones of all the girls with their names and birthdays written on it. At number six spot, we have the Goatman's Bridge. Why are there so many haunted bridges? Like, I don't get it. But in Denton County, Texas, lies the Goatman's Bridge, which was built in 1884. This bridge is supposedly haunted by the ghost of the Goatman. The story goes that a black goat farmer named Oscar Washburn was renowned for quality meat, milk, and cheeses, and then he moved with his family just north of the bridge. Except when he arrived in this area, he was instantly the target of racial hate crime. The racist town folks came together and burned down the farm with the family inside. They then threw Oscar's body over that very bridge. Now he appears as a half goat, half man humanoid that reeks of decaying flesh. If you knock on the bridge three times, it said that you can summon the goat man, but now others use this area for rituals and other supernatural activities. Right in the hump of our list, we have the Lady of White Rock Lake. The lake is located in Dallas, Texas, and many visitors claim that they spot a drenched young woman who appears crawling out of the water or asking to fetch a ride. When many people offer her this ride, she disappears out of thin air and leaves a bloody wet seat mark and a terrified driver. Even though many of the drivers were scared to their core, some decide to go to the address given to them by the girl. When they arrive at the door, they're all met by the same man who tells them that his daughter had gone sailing and never came back. Many people believe the story is inspired by the 1953 book, Nyman Marcus, Texas, the story of the proud Dallas store. And according to the book, Malloy and his wife are driving home late one night in East Dallas when a young, beautiful blonde girl ghost appears on the road. Her elegant dresses is naturally wet and she seems to be in trouble. She gives them an address on gas and Avenue and asks them to be taken home, but as they drive, she disappears leaving only a mark. At our number 4 spot, we have the Lake Worth Monster. You just learned about the Goatman, right? Well, this is basically the Goatman, but of the lake. This monster terrorized the people of the town for years, with many describing the creature as being 7 feet tall, around 300 pounds, long neck, flopped eared, pot bellied, covered in white scales and hair. I swear, I just described Shaquille O'Neal. The monster was supposedly captured on camera, but you guys be the judge of that one. It looks like a two year old drew on a camera lens on a potato with a crayon and then took this photo. But who knows, it might be real. This beast was inspired by Sally Ann Clark's book, The Lake Worth Monster of Greer Lake, Fort Worth, Texas. In the book, the monster jumped on the hood of someone's car and shook up the car so badly that they got caught in a bad accident. The people described it being a seven feet tall being covered in scales and fur and resembled a half goat and half man. Pretty scary if you ask me. All the way at our number three spot, we have the Donkey Lady. The Donkey Lady of San Antonio, Texas dates all the way back in the late 1800s. The Donkey Lady was once a beautiful woman with children and a husband, but one day in a rage, the husband burned down the house with the children and wife still inside. The children passed away, but however, the wife managed to survive, but suffered greatly from this. Her toes and fingers would be fused together in a hoof like way, and her face was melted and sagging, inspiring the Donkey Lady name. There's a bridge in South San Antonio named the Old Apple White Bridge, or the Donkey Lady Bridge. This is the bridge she went to crown after this horrible tragedy. Now it's said if you go to the bridge after midnight and call out the Donkey Lady, she will appear just before you. Some have claimed she had run at people who call out her name, or sometimes just stalks in the forest line waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. At number two spot, we have the girl who danced with the devil. The story takes place in the 1970s in San Antonio, Texas, with a young Mexican girl named Rosa. One day the girl wanted to attend a dance at a nearby nightclub named the El Cabarancito. However, the parents were very strict and didn't want her any anywhere near the nightclub. Despite their order, she snuck out of her house and traveled all the way to the nightclub where she could finally have her dance. At the club, Rose was approached by this very tall, charming, and well-dressed man who asked her permission to dance. When they began dancing, Rosa was terrified when she discovered he had goat hooves instead of feet. When she screamed in terror, people in the club started to chase him out, but as he got close, he vanished out of thin air, leaving a trail of smoke and the smell of sulfur. 
Double activity if that wasn't enough. It's said that the area surrounding the nightclub still smells of sulfur to this day. At a number one spot with El Muerto. El Muerto, otherwise known as the Headless Horseman of Texas, is a Texas legend that dates all the way back in the mid 1800s. The story goes that two rangers, Cree Taylor and William Bigfoot Wallace, were hunting a criminal known as Vidal along the Mexican border. Vidal had been wreaking havoc all across the state of Texas, so when the ranger caught them, they wanted to set an example. So they did just that and cut his head clean off. They then tied his head to the saddle and sent this horse with the headless body running off into the night. Now the horse continued to explore the region with its headless rider. The tale of El Muerto began to grow after it was reported that both had been seen numerous times and that gunshots had no impact on either of them. Spotting El Muerto was thought to foreshadow bad luck because everyone who claimed to have seen him was struck with a series of bad luck and poor health following it. At number 10 spot, we have the grave with stairs. Just from the photo alone, this is one of the scariest graves I've ever seen. Easy access to the dead, right? Well, this eerie grave belonged to a girl named Florence Irene Ford. Then in 1871, shortly after her 10th birthday, she passed away from yellow fever. So the reason for the stairs, when the daughter was alive, she was always terrified of storms. So you would get the classic mom taking care of her own daughter. But since she has now passed, the mother decided to build stairs down to her casket in order to comfort her daughter when it got stormy. I mean, it's a really sweet idea until you realize it's also really, really scary. She would go down these stairs, close the trap door above her, sit in complete darkness while singing hymns and songs to her daughter. I could only imagine what the people around must have thought when they heard this type of stuff. At number nine spot, we have the Devil Worshipper Road. Located in Waynesboro, this road's real name is Waynesboro Shibuta Road, or by its more popular name, the Devil Worshipper Road. I know, I read that name and already knew this story was gonna be all types of creepy. Story goes that a local farmer was struggling financially, so in hopes to provide for himself, him and his family decided it was best to sell his soul to the devil. He documented the creature that approached him as being seven feet tall, red glowing eyes, and holding a pitchfork. Many people say that when they drive on this road at night, their car shuts down, leaving them stranded. And imagine just being in the middle of this rural highway in the middle of the night with nothing but trees and trees all around you. For some people, the spirits try to taunt them by shaking up their car until they either crash or have to stop driving completely. Then when your car is shut off, some claim that a half goat, half man will stand on top of your vehicle. This is basically the plot of any horror movie ever. But who knows if it's real because why would anyone want to go to a road named Devil Worshippers Road in the first place? At our 8th spot, we have the Weeping Woman of Callaway Hall. During the Civil War in Columbus, Mississippi, there were stories of a nurse who started to fall in love with a wounded soldier. After months in her care, the two would share stories and life experiences, but as the soldier started to heal back up, he quickly returned back into battle. He left and after many, many years, he never ended up returning back to the woman. The nurse who was named Mary was so heartbroken that she ultimately made the decision to take her own life. She did this by jumping off the clock tower in the middle of the night. Now locals claim that her distraught spirit remains by the Callaway Hall Tower to this day. The security guards report that their faucets would turn on and off and these are the faucets with the handles you need to physically turn, not no hand sensor one. And she got her name because she tends to wake up students in the middle of the night by crying at the end of their beds. So just imagine what that would look like. At our number 7 spot we have McCredis disease. If you look up McCredis online you won't find much about it however if you're from Mississippi you've probably heard older relatives mention it men back in the day and sometimes until now would ingest large amounts of lead which would make them secrete a chemical and would make the women around them descend into a homicidal rage for example women who were the friendliest and happiest would turn into irrational and erratic people the story started in Europe when a man had an angry mob of women running after him after he ingested a good amount of lead Finding he couldn't do anything about it, he jumped into the well below freezing river and with no hesitation, all the girls jumped in and ended up drowning. Then it hit Mississippi when a large group of women became hostile and tried to kill every man in town. I don't know about you, but this is absolutely terrifying, but I'm gonna need more data for this. At number six spot, we have Goat Castle. In the August of 1932, Jane Sergic Morrill, better known as Jenny, was found murdered in her home. She had only purchased the home recently, but friends noticed that the moment she got it, she was showing very strange behavior. Many people consider that she was trying to live a hermit lifestyle. By the way, she only had visits from her cousin and suspected lover, Duncan. Shortly after, the two of them would start to have issues with their neighbor, Richard Dana, and Octavia Dockery. So when she was found murdered, the police immediately suspected it to be the neighbors, Richard and Octavia. Except when the police went to the couple's home to ask questions, the mansion was in complete disarray and was a complete disaster. Painting was peeling, windows were broken, holes were in the walls, and the house was infested with insects. As well, the house contained live animals, including a goat, hence the name. Eventually, the couple was cleared for murder and allowed to go back into their home, except they would pass away shortly. Now it's said that if you walk into the home, you can see an 
apparition who is believed to be Jenny seeking revenge for her murder. Right in the Humphrey list we have McRaven Tour Home. This place is sometimes called Mississippi's most haunted house and for very good reason. The McRaven Tour Home located at 1445 Harrison Street in Vicksburg once served as a confederate campsite and a makeshift hospital. Supposedly at least 11 people have been buried on the property ground. Many witnesses have reported seeing all of the ghosts who have been buried on the property. These ghosts include Mary Elizabeth Howard, who died during childbirth in the house in 1836. During the siege of Vicksburg, McRaven was transformed into a makeshift hospital. According to local legend, John H. Bob caught some Union soldiers tampering with his crops became enraged and threw a brick at one of them, and seeking revenge, the soldiers returned later and that night they killed Bob, making him the third resident to die at McRaven, which he can also be seen walking around the home to this day. At number 4 spot with the Witch of Yazoo Gravesite. In the middle of the old historic Glenwood Cemetery, there is a chain link surrounding a grave known as the Witch's Grave. According to local legend, a witch lived on the Yazoo River shoreline. This witch would lure in fishermen to tease and torture them for later. Eventually, the frequency of attacks increased and law enforcement was quick involved. They eventually caught on to her ways and chased her through the swamps where she half drowned in quicksand. As she sank down, she swore her revenge on Yazoo City and the town's people saying, quote, in 20 years I will return and burn this town to the ground. No one thought of it at the time and then came May 25th, 1904. The fire of 1904 destroyed more than 200 residents and nearly every business in Yazoo City, which is around 324 buildings in total. The witch's graves also has these chains around them, but apparently they need to be replaced constantly since they continue to be broken off. Do you think it's a witch or is it just some people messing around the cemetery? What do you think? At number 3 spot we have Witch Dance and Natchez Trace. Staying on the topic of witches, the forest trails of Natchez Trace located in Tupelo, Mississippi are said to have been a popular meeting spot for witches back in the day. The sign of the area reads Witch Dance, the very name conjures visions of eerie midnights, swirling back capes, and brooms stacked against a nearby tree. The old folks say the witches once gathered here to dance and that wherever their feet touched the ground, the glass withered and died, never to grow again. Impossible? Maybe so, but look around. Look for a hidden spot where no grass grows. So basically, when you see dead grass, witches are said to have danced there. And some of these barren or scorched spots of the ground can still be seen to this day. At number two spot, we have the Chatawa Monster. This is basically Mississippi's Bigfoot. So according to the Pike County legend, a circus train was going down the old Illinois Central Railroad and in a sudden turn of events, it derailed in the swamps near Chattawa. Except this circus was not like any regular circus. It apparently had many strange critters and creatures on board. One of them being a half man, half ape hybrid, which appeared as a large hairy creature. This creature was very hostile and would attack any person or animal that got too close. So a search party was quickly put together to capture this beast, but they left empty handed and the monster was never seen again. At number one spot, we of Robert Johnson and the Crossroads. This is probably the most original story that related Crossroads was selling your soul to the devil. So there's that. So for those who don't know the legend, Robert Johnson was a semi lackluster guitar player until he decided to journey to the crossroads of Highway 49 and 61 in Clarksdale. This is where he famously made a deal with the devil where he would sell his soul in exchange for a formidable technique and mastery of the blues. His style did a complete 180 and his style took over jazz with its unique flair. Legend has that three of his most hauntingly desperate recordings, Crossroad Blues, Hellhounds on My Trail, and Me and the Devil Blues are a trilogy of his deal with the devil. And guess how old he is when he died? Yup, 27 years old. At a number 10 spot, we have The Devil's Chair. I mean, just by listening to the name, you already know there is zero goodness in this chair. So numerous physics and clairvoyants meet up year round in Casadaga, Florida, which is known as the state spiritual hub to showcase their talents. Specifically, they meet up in Lake Helen Cemetery. As expected, this spiritual retreat is a hive of spiritual activity, but one place in particular is said to give you the shivers. The Devil's Chair of Casadaga is a big brick chair and it's so called haunted because many locals think that if you sit in it late at night when no one is present, the devil will come and visit you. The chair is said to be the way for the devil to communicate with you, but the odd thing is, is that the devil actually enjoys a cold one, you know, a beer. It's said that if you leave an open beer on this chair, it will be empty in the morning. So just to be sure, make sure you don't take a little rest in the cemetery, because it could be a terrifying experience. Now at number 9, the Florida Skunk Ape, also known as the Swamp Cabbage Man. The Stink Ape has been said to inhabit Florida, North Carolina, and Arkansas. The stories date back to the 60s and 70s, during the time of the Bigfoot mania, when the ape-like creature running on two legs was spotted in South Florida. The creature gets its name from its pugnant odor, said to be a byproduct of living alongside alligators and other swamp inhabitants. There's actually an official skunk ape research headquarters in Ochopee, where a researcher collects and investigates reports of swamp ape sightings. 
At number eight spot, we have the grave of the Tallahassee Witch. The old city cemetery in Tallahassee, Florida is not your regular graveyard. In the cemetery lies a supposed witch. Yes, a real witch. The witch went by the name of Elizabeth Bud Graham, or Bessie, who was only 23 when she passed away in 1889. Her tombstone is the most expensive and the most noticeable. It has this nice stone wall with large granite vases, sculpted feathers, and a cross inside of a crown. The legend goes that Elizabeth bewitched a wealthy man into marrying her, and this is why her tombstone looks like this. The scary thing is, is that her tomb has a dark witch references chiseled all around the stones. A lot of the writing is written in unique poem-like fashion, but some witch references she made was doubly dead, which means that a witch can only be dead once and killed twice. Others who visit the tombstone report feelings of unease, and they often report strange individuals leaving items at the tomb. To this day, it's said that the fellow witches often visit the grave to leave gifts for Bessie. Now at number 7, Spook Hill. In Lake Wales, there's a gravity hill that freaks out those traveling through by car. Stop your car in the right place on Spook Hill, put it in neutral, and watch as your vehicle rolls up the hill. On North Wales Drive, a sign says this, Many years ago, an Indian village on Lake Wales was plagued by raids of a huge gator. The chief, a great warrior, killed the gator in a battle that created a small lake. The chief was buried on the north side. Pioneer male riders first discovered their horses laboring downhill, thus naming it Spook Hill. When the road was paved, cars coasted uphill. Is this the gator seeking revenge, or is the chief still trying to protect his land? At a number six spot, we have Robert the Doll. Now I did a whole top 10 on this haunted doll, so go check it out in the other video if you haven't already. For those staying and don't know him, the story of Robert the Doll dates back to the early 1900s in Key West, Florida. A young boy named Eugene was given this doll and he named him Robert. Everything was good until the doll started to act super strange one night. On this night, Eugene woke up and looked at his bedside and scary enough, the doll was facing and staring right into his eyes. Eugene's mother heard the boy scream, but as she was running to the room, she heard furniture banging all across the room. When she finally got into the room, it was completely wrangled up with Robert the doll sitting on the edge of the bed. They then decided to lock Robert into the attic, but at night they would hear Robert's footsteps above them. Then when Eugene passed away, Robert the doll claimed the life of a 10 year old girl and the girl's parents reported that the daughter would complain about hearing the doll at night and seeing it walk. Halfway at number 5, Death Bridge. The Sunshine Skyway Bridge was a modern beauty when it opened in 1954. The bridge spans the mouth of Tampa Bay, connecting St. Petersburg on the north side with Bradenton on the south. But due to its height, it's also been an infamous spot for jumpers taking their own lives over the years. More than 200 people over the decade, according to some reports. Drivers on the bridge have also reported seeing a beautiful blonde hitchhiker on the bridge. When they pick her up, she begins to cry as the car approaches the top of the span. When the driver turns around to ask what's wrong, the woman has vanished. In 1980, the bridge was struck by a cargo ship, collapsing in the central span and taking the lives of 36 people people. At our number 4 spot, we have the Pensacola Lighthouse. Legend says that a couple known for having constant fights owned the property. After a decade of living there, the lady randomly decided to take her husband's life, but she wasn't done yet. She proceeded to chop his body up in over a thousand pieces and bury the pieces all around the lighthouse. The lighthouse's property also served as a place to treat Civil War soldiers and many have passed away at the property as well. Visitors of the lighthouse claim to hear footsteps when no one else is there and hearing their names being called throughout the whole building. Now the site is being controlled by the United States Coast Guard and they even allowed ghost hunters to investigate the area in an episode. Season 5, episode 5 if you guys are wondering. Now at number 3, Sunland Hospital. Have you ever heard of Sunland Hospital in Orlando? It served as a tuberculosis hospital and later evolved into a training center for children with special needs. The facility closed after allegations of abuse and neglect and health code violations. The main patient building was turned into a park and reports claim that ghostly patients still hang around. Park visitors reported hearing children's laughter when no children were around and strange lights. Some also claim swings and other playground equipment moved by themselves. Apparently after being torn down in 1999, all of that remains of the Sunland facility is the old administration building. There was a Sunland Hospital in Tallahassee too, but the location closed in the 80s after reports of experiments and an apparent lawsuit filed claiming abuse occurred at the hospital. The state of Florida then closed all Sunland facilities in 1983. Two spot we have the Bloody Bucket Bridge. Yeah, sounds really nice. During the time of the Civil War, an African American couple moved and settled in Wachula, Florida. The woman worked as a midwife and she was pretty content with her situation. As time passed by, the wife started to act unstable and it was all due to the memory of her own child being stripped from her life during the Civil War. Haunted by the event, she took it on her own to suffocate babies as they were being born, and what's worse is that she told the parents it was a stillbirth. Then it said that she would take the remains of the baby to her husband, who would help grind them up and place them in a bucket. 
Later, she would take these buckets to the bridge and dump them into the water, hence the Bloody Bucket Bridge. People claim that if you visit the bridge on a full moon night, the water will appear red in color, looking like the blood of the baby she took. Now taking our number one spot, Devil's Tree. Inside Port St. Lucie's Oak Hammock Park sits an old oak tree that locusts say is evil, or more accurately, that something evil occurred there and it still haunts the land. In 1971, before the park was established, Gerard Schaefer, an ex-deputy for the Broward County Sheriff's Office, assaulted and took the lives of two 19-year-old girls, Paulette Goodenough and Barbara Ann Wilcox, then buried them beneath an old oak tree. He was then arrested for homicide and stabbed till he passed away in prison in 1995. The girls have been missing since January 8, 1973, but their bodies weren't discovered until 1977, when two fishermen noticed bones protruding from the ground. Local legends and ghost stories about the area include claims of blood-curdling screams erupting from the surrounding woods, ghostly apparitions, and camera malfunctions near the Devil's Tree. Police have responded to numerous calls claiming devil worshippers in hooded robes were performing rituals there. In 1993, the local pastor conducted an exorcism and put up a cross at the site. Numerous efforts to cut the tree down failed when chainsaws malfunctioned or axes broke. At our number 10 spot, we have the Tulsa's Hex House. Located on 10 East 21st Street in Oklahoma is the remnants of a home that was once a horror house. The owner of the home during the 1940s was a 45-year-old woman named Carolyn Smith. However, she wouldn't be the only resident in the home as she would keep two other women there as quote unquote slaves. These two women were named Virginia Evans and Willetta Horner, who were 30 and 31 years old at the time. They claim that they were being hexed by Corlin and were basically forced to give their paychecks directly to her, with their big reward coming when they arrived in the gates of heaven. Basically, Corlin would keep these two women in her basement and live off their checks. But that wasn't all. She would also receive aid from one of her slaves parents in which she received a total of $20,000 for nursing care. After the two women were suspected of missing, a police investigation eventually found them in prison in the home's basement living in the worst conditions, and this was during a seven year span. Corlin will only get subjected to one year in prison and the house was demolished with a parking lot built on top of it. However, some believe that the same basement is still underneath the parking lot. At a number 9 spot, we the mysterious shaman's portal. There is thought to be a literal portal portal in the sand dunes of Beaver, Oklahoma, known as Shaman's Portal or Oklahoma's Bermuda Triangle to others. The legend goes that in the 1500s, there was once a Spanish explorer named Coronado who stumbled upon the sand dunes. When he entered, he was warned by all local native tribes about the dangers of exploring the dunes, especially since they would avoid this area for almost centuries. However, as like any other early settler, Coronado didn't listen and instead brought three other men with him to explore these dunes. Halfway through their trip, they encountered strange flashes which seemed to look like green lightning. Then three men accompanying him died immediately and Coronado would write about this situation in his journal. Oklahoma State University archaeologist Dr. Mark Thatcher even spent three years studying the area until it was shut down by men with military credentials which matched the description of the men in black. So could this place be a spot where potential UFOs could have been or is this place in fact cursed like the natives say? At number 8 spot we have the Satanic Purple Church. In the town of Spencer, Oklahoma, there are a remains of an old church with stairs leading to a basement known as the Purple Church. Locals claim that this place was used for devil worship and forms of witchcraft and other animal sacrifices. Others even claim that when a full moon coincides with a Saturday, then Satanists will sacrifice virgins here at this church. Apart from that, before you enter, you will be met with various satanic purple pentagrams and different symbols. If you happen to stumble upon the area, don't be surprised to see animal carcasses scattered around, as they were probably used in some type of ritual. The issue about this place is that people have been chased not only by the spirits, but by real men in robes and even the local landowners. So be sure to get permission if you decide to step foot in this haunted place. At a number 7 spot, we have the Ghost of the Little Theater. Located in Tulsa, Oklahoma is a tiny theater which was built in 1932. Although it is very small, it was home to many performances and progressed the entertainment scene in Oklahoma. However, in the 70s and the 80s, the theater would go through many fires which halted production and some say there were deaths in those fires that were never recorded. Then by 2004, the theater would go through disrepair and many would trespass to leave graffiti and garbage around. Eventually, the theater was fixed back up, but many who would visit claim that it wasn't the same as it used to be. Locals believe that the spirits of former workers and crew still reside inside of the building. Stage performers often report that they are sharing a stage with someone when there is no one else backstage with them. And according to a legend, a director passed away during a performance. So 
Could it be his apparition that appears on stage? Or could it just be a piece of our imagination? At our number six spot with the Spook Light Road. Spook Light Road, located in the small town Peoria, is a road in America where you are bound to encounter something you really don't want to. Specifically named East 50th Street, this stretch of road is said to have an unexplained light appearing over the sky in different shapes to different people. Some believe it's supernatural activity, while others believe UFOs. It was such a popular place during the 40s that during World War II, the US Army Corps of Engineers spent weeks in the area with the best technology technology, but in the end of the day, they had more questions than they had answers. This unexplained light has been debunked on different sources with claims of a person holding a lantern or even a person on a horse holding a lantern. But from the photos, what do you guys think about this? In the hump of our list, we have the Camp Scott Girl Scout Massacre. In the year 1977, a horrific tragedy occurred at the Camp Scott in Mays County, Oklahoma. This is when three Girl Scouts aged 8 to 10 were murdered by one psychopath. However, this all could have been prevented if they had listened to a message they had received prior to the killings. This is because weeks before, they had received a message saying, quote, we are on a mission to kill three girls in tent one. The camp director thought it was an elaborate joke and ended up discarding the letter. After a police investigation, they arrested local jail escapee Jean Leroy Hart but two years later, he was released after there was insufficient evidence. Now when people try to walk through this now abandoned camp, they claim to hear the spirits of the three girls murdered. However, I personally think that this isn't the worst part. It's the fact that this case was never solved, especially considering in 1989, DNA testing was conducted that showed three of the five probes matched Hart's DNA. As well, in 2022, authorities made public that DNA evidence strongly suggests Hart's involvement. Regardless, may these girls rest in peace. At number four spot, we have Veterans Lake. Introducing the most haunted lake in the state of Oklahoma, the Veterans Lake. Located in the western portion of Sulphur, Oklahoma, this lake was built to honor American war veterans. However, for many years, many have claimed that this lake is possessed by a woman who had drowned in the lake while trying to save her baby. People think that if you go swimming at night, her spirit will try to grab you and drown you down with her. There has also been stories of apparitions flying over the water and with some claiming to see the woman's face when looking down at it. People have I've also reported hearing a woman's voice while boating on the lake, crying for aid, and requesting that someone save her child from drowning. Out of a three spot with the Stone Lion Inn. In Guthrie, Oklahoma is the infamous Stone Lion Inn. The 114 year old inn has a pretty dark history, with some of the guests never checking out of this hotel. And by that, I mean they're still inside. Since the beginning of its construction, every single owner and visitor have reported something strange coming from this home. And this shouldn't be a surprise, because in the 1920s, this place was used as a funeral parlor. So best believe more than a few spirits have made its way to this home. Now the current owner of the home has had the property since the 1980s and they claim that ever since they began reconstruction of the home, the quote unquote old souls have been woken up and they make their presence known inside of this building. Guests find themselves either being tucked in bed or dragged out of it when they're all alone. When paranormal investigators came in, they found that the bathrooms had high EMF ratings, which also happens to be the spot where many people took their own lives. So if you ever want to visit the most haunted building in Oklahoma, maybe the Stone Line Inn is your best bet. At a number two spot, we have the Skirvin Hotel. First opening in 1911, this 10-story hotel was an instant hit to many tourists and anyone looking for a nice place to stay for a night. However, once people learned about the dark history attached to this place, many will go on searching for another local hotel. This is because the Skirvin Hotel has been rumored to be haunted by a lady who passed away the first year it opened up. The story goes that a maid named Effie had a secret affair with the owner, Mr. Skirvin, but he became extremely paranoid once Effie delivered his baby. So he decided to hide Effie and lock her up in a room on the 10th floor. After days of being locked up, Effie decided to take their baby and jump off the balcony to their deaths. Ever since that tragedy, this hotel has had countless supernatural occurrences. Visitors claim to see the spirit of Effie roaming the halls at night. At a number one spot, we have Elephant on LSD. In 1962, researchers from the University of Oklahoma injected a seven ton bull elephant by the name of Tusco with 297 milligrams of LSD or acid. Lead researcher Jolly West was also involved in the controversial MK Ultra experiment where they tested the use of psychedelics for brainwashing. The goal was trying to induce musk, which is the testosterone fueled ultra rage that elephant males go into during breeding season. And five minutes after the elephant was injected, Tusco would fall to the ground and just start seizing. To make things worse, they injected Tusco with an additional 2800 milligrams of promazine hydrochloride, an anti-nausea and sedative drug. After an hour of injections, Tusco would eventually pass away. The whole 
idea was controversial to begin with and shouldn't have ever happened. But what makes this failed experiment interesting is that acid is not supposed to be lethal to animals that size. To prove this, in 1984, a researcher from UCLA administered large doses of acid to two other elephants with none of them dying, making others believe that the other drugs they gave Tusco led him to his doom.